Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Storytelling in Business with Artemush and Makedonsky. We have a special guest tonight, Michael Davis, uh, an expert in storytelling and speaking. Uh, he's a member of uh, Speaking CPR, and he has a huge experience of working with speaking and business. And uh, Michael, hey, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your experience. It's so glad to see you here. Well, Artem, it's so great to be with you today. I was just on a call with a client in Switzerland, and I am I live wow. in the middle Midwest of the United States. Now I'm speaking with Russia. It's truly, <laughs> my job is truly takes me globally, and I just love it. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Stories take you places. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> so, Michael, um, we're here to discuss the storytelling and the speaking uh, and their intercommunications so maybe you could give us your short story like how did you come to do to be doing this so the folks around here know who I am I talking to today sure well I'll give you the short version I was a financial advisor for 29 years uh -huh. and I got started in speaking because back in 1994 I was sitting in my boss's office and he was reading me a bunch of feedback of evaluations I had gotten from a financial uh, retirement planning workshop I had done. Now I walked into that meeting thinking, oh, I got, this is good. You know, I did a great job. I had all these PowerPoint slides and oh, I put all the research and I, oh, I was, I was so good. And he looked at me and said, Michael, this is not good. <laughs> like, what do you mean? So he starts reading all these negative comments, and the longer he reads them, the worse I'm feeling. And I finally said, look, Joe, is there anything good in there? And he said, yeah, there, there's one. Here, let me find it. And he well, gets to the papers, and he said, yeah, here it is. Mike has nice hair. Oh, come on. That's a killer. <laughs> that's it? He said, yeah, that's it. That's the only good comment from your presentation. And then he said, Michael, you know, we hired you here to be part of this team to go out and give these workshops. You assured me you could do this. This is not acceptable. If you don't fix this, we're going to have to let you go. That's and I, yeah, I literally, to save my job, I went and I found Toastmasters International. And I don't know how familiar your viewers are with Toastmasters, but it's a worldwide organization to help people become, first of all, overcome their fear of speaking and, and to master communication to become better leaders. And that's where everything changed for me and put me down this path where I discovered my passion is speaking and storytelling. And not only that for myself, but helping other people who felt like I did back in my boss's office that day. Yeah, that's a great story by itself. That's a really good origin story. Thank, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Michael, you know, uh, Toastmasters are really present here. And uh, one of the experts in storytelling who I work with, she, she's also a member and she okay. participates. You know, uh, I would like to know your uh, experience. What was your like key insight or your key outtake from the, this whole education process? Like, what thought did you carry on from the Toastmasters that uh, like made it, made it up for you? you know, the first lesson I got, Artem, was my first, uh, when I gave my first speech, and uh -huh. I've probably given four or 500 speeches in Toastmasters now, but the first one, my evaluator told me to get past my nervousness. I said, well, how do you, how do you get past being nervous and uptight and all that? And she said, keep getting up and speaking. Huh. And nothing replaces getting up and speaking. You can't read about it. You can't do it in your head. I mean, you, it helps to visualize, I understand, but you've got to speak to people and you've got to fall down and mess up and, and make mistakes, get feedback, make changes and do it again and again. That's the only way to get better. There's no replacing. Right. Okay. Now, sounds practical. Now, that's the, 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 the first good lesson I got in Toastmasters. The most important lesson I got about storytelling is this. People do not value their own stories. Really? They don't. And here's my mother actually taught me this. She didn't know she was teaching me this. But my mom was born in France. I actually was born in France, but we came to the States when I was a baby. Uh -huh. Mom was born into France during the German occupation of World War II. Wow. So, one day she was telling me these stories about how every day when they woke up, 
they had this question, are we going to eat today? Wow. They didn't know. And it was very hard in the northern part of France. And at night, every night, they had blackout conditions. And when the air sirens would go off, they had to run down 22 steps. She said, I guarantee it was 22 because I counted them every time. They had to run across this parking lot into a bomb shelter. And they did that night after night after night for four years. Now, when she told me this story, Artem, we were sitting here in my nice, comfortable home in the Midwest of the United States where there's no bombs going off. And I looked at her and I said, Mom, how did you do that every day? And she looked at me for the longest time and she finally said, well, that's just what we did. We had to survive. And that conversation helped me understand she didn't understand the power of her story how remarkable that was yeah. to not done that so when i started meeting other people and coaching them i realized the person uh, the soldier i worked with who's who had a leg blown off or the woman who went through an abusive relationship or the person who's had a great sports accomplishment that was their everyday life so they don't see it as, as powerful as the rest of us do yeah wow your mom is a true hero wow that's that's really huge that's yeah, but, that's a good insight by the way well and tell her that and she'd be like that's you know that's silly you know yeah. i was just we surviving and i've worked with world ca uh, class caliber athletes and they're like well we're not heroes uh soldiers no they'll, they'll tell you no i'm not a hero i just live my life yeah that's, you know, I, I recently talked to Murray Nossel and he's like one of key principles in storytelling is tell what happened. Like just, just, just no structures, no nothing. What happened? And the, the things you're telling right now is like the, the basics of what happened. Like for them, that was just what happened. But for yeah. us, it's like, wow, that's huge. Wow. Thank you. Well, and that leads to the other point, to, to the, yeah. the, the most important story lesson I have today as a storytelling coach 25 years after starting is that if you're willing to share your stories of painful experiences then you will connect with an audience yeah that's that's true and that's that's scary in a way but you know that's that's true that's the only way to deeply connect to share your vulnerability yeah i don't do you know the name craig valentine uh it's something familiar is he a director or of some sort yeah, or, he's actually he was a world champ 20 years ago he won the world championship of public speaking with toastmasters and he became my wow. coach and here's what he taught me artsum the story that you don't want to tell is the story you need to tell. Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to remember this one. He, he's a wise man. He's been a great coach to me and shared a lot of ideas like that. But that was one of the most important is being willing to you know, share the pain that you've had in your life because other people have had that pain too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a deep idea. It's not about the corporate uh, world. It's just about human beings. Great. Exactly. And you know what? You're right. It is not easy. But yeah. once you get past that and you're able to do it, you will be a much more impactful speaker. Yeah. And, and a human. Yeah. Thank like, you. Absolutely. It's more, it humanizes you. Wow. I, I, you know, it's, it's been like five or 10 minutes, but I, I, I think I, I already got a lot out of it. Okay. Let, let's, let's be moving to the next one. You know, there's, there's like more, more than, more than enough groups and experts on storytelling, like, you know, Ted and Toastmasters that we've talked about the, the moth. Yes. And, you know, every expert has their experience and you've talked about your major experience and, uh, you know, different, different people discover different stuff on their journey. And one thing, uh, I, I've been talking to one such expert recently who is, who is uh, Doug Stevenson, and he's developed his own uh, story theater method. Yes. And you're, you're basically familiar. He's, he's, oh, yeah. I've met Doug. I've heard him speak. I've got his books. He's terrific. I love yeah. Doug. So my question is a tricky one, actually, because um, I see that in corporate world, maybe it's a, it's a Russian aspect, but, you know, 
Dep depends. So maybe uh, in the corporate world, uh, do we really need to, as speakers, to engage so much into a story, like to react and interact and, you know, to voice the calls and voice the, the thoughts? So is there, is there a boundary that you should cross? How do you feel about it? Uh, look. No, there's there really isn't. I mean, obviously, language and, and being you know, being respectful. But he, to answer that question, I'm going to share a story from a client of mine who's also a coach. Okay. He was coaching a man for a, a big international bank who was really having a hard time with his team. They felt like he was driving them too hard. He didn't connect with them. He it was really having a hard time getting good engagement scores from his team. Uh -huh. He learned how to tell his story, and he told a story of extreme pain in his life, where as a teenager, his mother was diagnosed with mental illness, and she eventually was put in an institution, an asylum, and never came out. And he, he promised himself after, and he felt a lot of guilt about that, as often kids do. He got through that experience and said, I will never go down that path in life. I can't go down that path my mother did. And it's why he was so hard driving and charging. He told this story to his team. He had people in tears. He wow. had people who said, I now understand why you do what you do. And he came back to them and said, I will try to be a better boss and a better man because I didn't realize just how hard I was pushing you. His scores have gone through the roof as far as engagement within his team because he humanized himself and told a story about his personal pain that gave people a completely different point of view of who this man is. Yeah, that's, that's really a way to connect. Yeah. Absolutely. That's and yeah, I can I can feel what what boundary you're talking about, and yeah, uh, I can understand it. Now, a little backstory for that art, so you know, he really yeah. resisted for I think two years. My my two friend years. worked with him for two years before he said, "All right, I got to do something." Um, I like to say the pain of not telling his story became greater than the pain of keeping to himself and staying as the same kind of manager because his team was not performing well. Yeah. Hmm. So it wasn't like he woke up one day and said, Oh, I'm going to have, you know, to your point, it's not easy. But when he finally broke down that barrier and told it huge difference in the re uh, the results. Yeah. Wow. You know, Mike, um, I was, <laughs> to be honest, I was asking a bit dif different question, but I, I like that the way you've interpreted the, the word boundary and uh, that we discussed this this issue and uh, yeah I, I can I can feel the like that's that that it's valuable that we're talking about it. Uh, All right, now let me answer the let me give you a better answer to it. Let me, no no it's it's not it's not better it's just a different one. Let me just rephrase it real quick real quick. So uh, this the story theater stuff uh, it includes a lot of you know replay and uh you, you know moments like well what should i do i was thinking and then i called her and i said well i said this and she said this like reactions interactions and you know theatrical stuff so sure. uh it's 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 a lower lower level question that we were from what we were talking about a moment ago but you know uh how do you feel about it? Like, should we use it in corporate world or just tell what happened and that's it? So. No, I think we should. And I've seen Doug do it in front of other speakers. I've also seen videos of him doing it in front of companies and getting fantastic reaction. I tell stories with dialogue and putting people in the scene and, and acting it out somewhat. We, as, as presenters, we have to be actors to some extent to connect with the audience. Now you can overdo it to where you look like you're doing a stage play and that's not what we want, but absolutely. It, be theatrical in, in your presentation because people engage more with that. Great, okay. I like your view. That's that, that in, in the cause of engagement, like not theatrical for theater, but theatrical for the result, the engagement. I love it. Exactly. We don't want to become Shakespeare and we <laughs> look to the stars and heavens, but just 
you can recreate conversations and be theatrical. Yeah. Michael, I, I like that you've uh, put it up uh, about the dialogues and the conversations because you have this great structure, the seven C's of uh, a good story. And um, just to uh, remind the audience real quick, so it's a character, a conflict. Uh, I, 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 oh, I will struggle with the C names. So okay, yeah. Remember, yeah. Yeah, you've got a character, a relatable character yeah. in circumstances. Circumstances. Are difficult. You've got conflict. Right. You've got the cure. Yeah. The change. The uh, the um, conversation. Lesson. Yeah, the conversation and the lesson. The the the, the one. Yeah, the, the, le the lesson learned. Yeah, the uh, yeah. carry out message. Forgot yeah. my own seven for a second. Yeah, carry out message. That's the lesson. And I wanted to get creative with it, so I called the seven C's to sensational storytelling. Um, it's a good name. It's it's a catchy. I, it's it's catchy, catchy. Yes. Yeah. My question here is, uh, I see that different authors like Paul Smith and uh, people around the storytelling community, they see that the character, the cure, or the teacher and the guru, like different stuff, they are there. And th those are the parts of the story or maybe a hero's journey in some of these interpretations. But the dialogue, the conversation, it's more like the way you give the story to the audience. So why not... Uh, amplify uh, not the dialogue or s not surprise or maybe you know emotions like many people do why dialogue is so important that it's included that's an excellent question artem and i'm going to use an example of the story i shared earlier where i didn't use dialogue and i'm going to use it now and see if you can feel the difference it's okay. when i'm sitting in my boss's office i used a little bit but let me let me put you back in that scene Okay. And see if dialogue feels different. So my boss calls me into his office. He says, we need to go over these evaluations from your last workshop. My first thought is, oh, this is going to be great. I did a great job. I put all those PowerPoints together. I had so much energy. I was so excited. I gave them so much good information. This is going to be good. He looked at me and said, Michael, this is not good. What do you mean, Joe? He says, this is what people are writing about you. This guy moves around way too much, couldn't, didn't stand still. I couldn't even take notes. Slow down. What? Here's another one. Way too many PowerPoint slides, couldn't read half of them. Waste of time. You're kidding. Here's my favorite one, Michael. Way too much information. I feel like I've been hit by a fire hose. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I don't believe this. Joe, is there anything good in there? Yeah, there's one. Hold on. <laughs> Here it is. <clears throat> Michael has nice hair. <sighs> That's it? Yeah, that's it. Michael, you know, when we hired you, we told you that this is going to be an important part of your job. This is not acceptable. You either need to fix this or else. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? I'm going to lose my job. All right. Stop there. Do you see the difference? Wow. Yeah. I know I, I did something. I can feel it. Yeah, you can feel it, right? And that's what dialogue does. It now, here's a follow-up question for you. Did you feel like you were sitting right next to me watching this happen? I actually felt that I was switching roles. Like I was okay. there and like, you are the boss. You are the boss. It was, yeah. and I was yeah. seeing from the both sides. And yeah, that was great. But you were there. The difference, yes. the difference is if I stand to the side and say, well, like, kind of like I call it the TV news reporter. You're holding a microphone. Well, Michael was in his boss's office. <laughs> and he thought he did well his boss said no you didn't and he read him a bunch of reviews and michael was upset and, and the boss said you're gonna get fired Again, that's reporter mode it's it's kind of over there whereas dialogue puts you right there in the scene and it's like that's where the emotional connection is felt yeah did you feel any kind of sympathy for me sitting there thinking oh my god this is awful of course i did that was 
I I I don't recall any any similar situation in my career. Well, right. not not off the top of my head, but I can imagine how painful it is when you go in and you're like, I'm the hero, and they they no, you're not. No, you're not. Wow. You're bad. But yeah, you, know, you may not think of your own situation, but you might think of someone else you know. Yes. Yes. That's that's it, and you know that that was powerful. Thank you for the demonstration. That was sure, really yeah. clear. Yeah, and yeah, that's the other part of storytelling is when you tell a really good story, Artem. You are no longer telling your story; you're really telling the audience's story mm -hmm. because they start thinking about, "Oh my gosh, what would I do if I was in that situation?" Or that reminds me of the day I was in my boss's office. And that's fine. That's what you want because now they're they're feeling, and that's what a great story does. It breaks down those barriers and says, "All right, now I'm emoting and I'm connecting with you." That's why we tell stories. Wow! So when you're telling a story, it's not actually you're not telling your story, but your audience's story. That's a great quote. <laughs> Is it like? Can I quote it from for Absolutely. Davis? Quote it. Yes. Like great. the story of my mom. If you yeah. have relatives that went through the war, you might have thought about your relatives for a moment, even though I was telling my mom's story. Yeah, I actually was thinking about my grandfather, Boris. His, he's, he's already passed, but yeah, I was remembering some stuff from his, yeah. from his life. Yeah. That's why I tell my mom's story. You're never going to meet my mom, most likely, but you, you immediately thought of your grandpa, and we connected, even though we just met in the last 20 minutes. Yeah. That's great. That's that's a great power of story. Thank you for the yeah. this clear like water demonstration. Thank you. Sure, my pleasure. Okay, so um, Michael, I have two more questions that yeah. I usually pose to all the storytellers, and uh, I just got I have like different answers for them, but yeah. I really would like to know your opinion. So the first one is, what would be your advice for people who are uh, in the beginning, beginning of the way, uh, and they want to develop, develop their storytelling skills. So what would you advise them to do? Get a mentor or a coach. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to what we said earlier. We don't see the power of our own stories because we lived our lives. We often can't see the lessons, but other people immediately will. I mentioned to you, I was talking with a woman in Switzerland before this call. Yeah. She, She's very intuitive. She understands her story, but I was showing her things and, and that she did not see because it was her experience. And I'm as a, I try to be an audience member and say, oh, wow, that's what I got out of this. So get somebody to work with who will help you, first of all, find the key parts of your story and will push you to go into the painful parts because that's where you're going to connect. And we don't want to voluntarily go into pain. That's why we need a mentor or a coach. Great. That's actually unique. I, I've never uh, received such an answer on this question. A mentor is really powerful because I always teach uh, folks around here that the story may be yours, but the message and the key outtake is always theirs. So, yep, yeah, absolutely. that's, that's a good one. Here's the other thing I find with yeah. speaking are to most people tend to uh, criticize themselves way too much. Yeah. And a good coach or a mentor will show you what you do well. Because if you don't know that you're not going to keep doing those things. So they need to point out first to me, you, the first thing I do with people say, this is what you do really well. You may not know. Now let's work on the other parts. Yeah, that's a good start. Yeah. That's, that's refreshing. Okay, Michael, the last one and uh, my favorite one. Uh, I put up a phrase and I would like you to finish it. It goes like this. It takes one thing, one thing to get from a good story to a great story. And that one thing is? Be willing to face and share your pain. I could, I could have anticipated it. Yeah, we've talked about it for quite a while today and yeah that's that's really important well here's what's interesting that that uh, per, um, i told you the story of the man who worked in the uh, the bank well yeah. the, my friend uh, my my uh, client who's a coach gave me this phrase yesterday so it's perfect timing for this interview <laughs> and i had not heard this before he said michael good stories are the ones you don't want to tell others 
great stories are the ones you don't want to tell yourself. Oh, that's even deeper. That's, deep, isn't it? that's my friend, Scott. I didn't say that. And he meet and, and it reminds me of what happened to me in 2010. I went through a very painful divorce and I went bankrupt. Wow. In one year. Oh my God. I did not share that story with people for seven years because I wouldn't face it. I, I, you know, there's a phrase we use in the States. We stuck our head in the sand because we didn't want to see it. Yeah. And that's what I did. But once I started sharing it, I realized what a great story I had. I, I had to work on it, but it was becoming a great story because people would come up to me afterward and said, I know exactly what you've been through. Thank you for sharing that. God, I'm not alone. And I was like, wow. Yeah, that's that's the phrase. Good stories are the ones you don't want to tell others. Great stories are the ones you don't want to tell yourself. Wow. I can I can really dissect this interview by quotes and it would take like <laughs> the whole interview block oh, on the okay. quote. Great. That, that that's, is helpful. Yeah, the, it is. Thank you so much. Michael, thank you so much for being here today and sharing all those insights and to sum it up, can you give some contacts of yours so I can put a link in the description and find you? Can you. Can go to uh, speaking CPR is um, speakingcpr.com is my website. Yeah. And for your viewers, uh, if they want to, I'm, send me a quick note to my email, mike at speakingcpr.com. And I will, and I'll send this to you too, Artem. I've got a, a, a resource called 52 Storytelling Tips. It's a series. I of, got it. You got it? Okay. It's Great. amazing. Yeah. It, send me an email. If you're watching this, I'll be happy to sign you up. There's no cost or obligation, but it's a weekly five-minute audio that helps you build the skill of storytelling. That's, that's amazing. I, I am already like on the second or the third lesson, and it's just great. Great. I'm glad, you, glad they're helping. That it is, it is. Thank you so much, Michael. And uh, I really wish you all the great stories to come. Thank you for your time. You also. Cheers.